the Father's house is a spiritual relationship to God in Christ. It is not a building or buildings in heaven. Okay, so we're going to begin reading from our Bible, John chapter 1. Okay, so let's get our Bible up here. Let us begin. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. So we're going to pause there for a while. And let's first establish the context. Who was Jesus speaking to here? Now, John chapter 14 is the continuation of a conversation which began in John chapter 13 and extends all the way to John chapter 16 after which Jesus prayed to his father in John chapter 17 and then in John chapter 18 they went into the garden of Get Gethsemane where Jesus was arrested and his trial began and then he, there was his cru crucifixion okay so the the information in these chapters um is where Jesus knowing that he was about to be crucified um, he was speaking some really deep stuff, okay? And just let me just show you, let me just go, let's, let me just take you back to John chapter 13 and go down to verse 31. Um, even verse 30, it says, He, meaning Judas, he then having received the sop, went immediately out and it was night. Therefore, when he, Judas, was gone out, Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in, in him, and there begins the conversation. Okay? So this conversation, which continues over into John chapter 14, began in John chapter 13 after Judas left. Okay? So whatever Christ says here does not apply to Judas. Judas is not in this. Okay? It's just for the 11 remaining disciples okay i just thought that um that should be important to mention in terms of the context and um it's something that i you know i noticed so i just brought it to your attention but anyway so my father's house okay um now let's think about these mansions okay in my father's house are many mansions because when i <laughs> when i was uh, educated in the religious organization that i was baptized into it was always presented that these were actual buildings that christ had gone up into heaven to start a massive construction project and he was building all of these big, big mansions, and people would, you know, they have the the the, the hymn, um, "I've got a mansion just over the hilltop." You know, <laughs> we'll go, we'll walk on streets of gold, and you know, we have that was the that was the the teaching that I received that Jesus was had gone into heaven to build mansions up there for us to live in. Okay, but um, actually this word mansion here now is, v I mean, <laughs> here I go with the King James again, right? Um, this is, I don't know why they put mansions here. I don't know why. Because the word that is used here in the Greek, let me just get it for you. It's the word, Greek word money. And it means a staying, a residence, okay? The act or a place. Uh, more correctly, even a dwelling place. A place to stay or a place to rest, okay? In any case, what he actually said, In my father's house are many. And even if we use the word mansions there, he says the mansions are already the, he's, it never says that he's going to build. He says they are already in his father's house. Okay, And what he's actually going to do is to prepare those places. So, so in my father's house, there are many places okay, of rest. There are many places of dwelling. 
and I am going to prepare a place now specifically for you. And who is the you he's speaking of? Is the 11 disciples. That was those were whom he was specifically speaking to. Now, yes, by extension, if we, uh, um, if we qualify like the disciples, we too have places there. But I want to stick right now to the context, immediate context of what Jesus was talking about, who Jesus was speaking to, because it is very important that we do that. So he's telling his 11 disciples there, I'm going to prepare a place for you, okay? And there are many dwelling places in my father's house, okay? Now, secondly, <clears throat> we need to ask the question about my father's house. What exactly is Jesus talking about here? Now, let's look at this term, my father's house. Actually, Jesus first used this term in in the book of John in John chapter 2 okay so let's head over to John chapter 2 verse 16 John chapter 2 verse 16 look what it says there and said this is Jesus said unto them that sold doves take these things hence and make not what my father's house make not my father's house and house of merchandise. What was he speaking about then? He was speaking about the temple at Jerusalem. Okay? He was speaking about the temple at Jerusalem. So, Jesus' first use of that term, my father's house, was in reference to the temple at Jerusalem. Now, don't get bogged down yet. <laughs> don't get bogged down yet. Now, let's, co let's continue. So as the point I was making here was that Jesus was speaking to Jews and they so that that is what they were familiar with and that is how God um normally deals with man he comes to he he, he communicates with us based on our contemporary environment so he uses the things which we are familiar with to help us to the things to help us understand the things which we are not familiar with okay so the jews were familiar with the temple i mean it was there for thousands of years and that was their center that was the center of their life okay so they, this is the concept of in my father's house that jesus had and the jews had it and so jesus was meeting them where their understanding was because let me just show you now how he would lift their understanding right so let's go back to the Bible here. Okay, remember so he remember he just told them that um take these uh merchandise out of my father's house, okay? And his let's so let's continue verse 17 and his disciples remembered it was written the zeal of thine house had eaten me up. And verse 18 the, then answered the Jews and said unto him, what sign showest thou unto us seeing that thou doest these things? Verse 19, Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. <laughs> okay? All right? So remember, he is just telling them, Take these merchandise out of my father's house. In another, in another um, gospel, it says, um, You don't make my father's house a den of thieves. And, and another one, it says, my father's house shall be called a house of prayer. He was all talking about the temple, right? So now, Jesus turns to them and says, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But, now here's the kicker, he spake of the temple of his body, Right? So let's go back to that picture now. Let's go back to that picture. So you see, this temple, as magnificent as it was, you know, um, the, the historians said that this temple was built on a hill and because of the shining, polished stone that it was constructed with and the gold and so on, in the sunlight, it was like a 
like a star shining on the hill. It was a light on top of the hill. And that's why Jesus says, um, Jerusalem is a light on top of a hill. You don't cover it down, you know. And that, so all of these concepts were what the Jews understood, right? But anyway, um, so the point I'm making here, so Jesus said, look, you see this magnificent temple here? It is just but a shadow of me. <laughs> you know, he says the temple that he was speaking of was himself. Okay, so he, he understood and he wanted the disciples to understand that this temple in which the Jews said that God dwelt. Remember um, when Solomon built the temple and so on. They, they, built, they built it as a dwelling place for God. Right? And they said that, oh, when you pray to this temple, God must hear from heaven and so on. Right? So in their eyes, God, this temple was a dwelling place for God. You remember David wanted to build a dwelling place for God. Solomon wanted to build a, a dwelling place for God. Right? So Jesus says, well, hey, you see this? This so-called dwelling place for God, it is a shadow. It is a symbol of me because Christ was the true dwelling place of God. Right? Remember what he says in um <clears throat> let's go to um let's go to John 14 verse 10. Okay, John 14 verse 10. And we'll see that, okay? John four. So we're going back to John chapter fourteen. Remember, we are <clears throat> taking our text, our study from John chapter fourteen, okay? So let's just jump down to to verse ten. All right. See what it says there. Look what he says to the, to his disciples. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? <laughs> okay. Right. It says, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that what? Dwells in me. Okay? So you remember, the temple, a temple is where God dwells. Right? So he, Jesus um, is saying that the Father is dwelling in him, which makes him a temple, which makes him the fulfillment of the Jerusalem temple. Right? Because at some point, um, I can't remember in what, which gospel he was saying to them that a greater than the temple is here. And he was speaking of himself. Right? So notice how Jesus moved their minds now from the literal physical temple to the real temple which was himself. The father was dwelling in him. Okay? So he was the father's house. <laughs> right? Jesus was the Father's house. So when we go back up to verse 2, okay, when we go back up to verse 2, in my Father's house, he's really speaking about himself. <laughs> in me, in me, in Christ, there are many resting places. There are many places of dwelling. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. Where? In him. He was going to prepare a place in him for his disciples, right? Now, look at let's let's go to um for example, let's 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 let me show you something here. In Christ there are there there, there are many places of dwelling, okay, or resting places. Look at Jesus' prayer in John chapter seventeen, verse twenty one, okay? John chapter 17, verse 21. He says there, this is what Jesus was praying to his father for his father to accomplish. This is what God had, has already accomplished. And it seems like Christians have no idea. But here's Jesus praying for it. Don't we think that God has already accomplished this? Do we think God is sitting around waiting on us to accomplish this? No. Jesus is the one who prayed for it, not us. Okay? And since Jesus prayed for it, we are, we, I am, I can put my head on the block. <laughs> because once Jesus prayed for it, I know God will answer that prayer. And look what, look what he prayed. 
He says he, he's praying for that all may be one. That's all those who believe in him. He says, look what he says, verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone, for the, for the 11, but for them which shall believe on me through their word, which is you and I, right? So he's praying for us, all believers. And he says that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me. So that's the temple of the Father's temple, the Father's house there, where Christ where the Father dwells in Christ. Okay, that's the Father's house. And I in thee, so the Father also is a temple of Christ, that they, meaning the disciples and those who believe, also may be one in us. So here, the Father and the Son are a temple of the believers. Right? Or for the believers. Okay? So here we see the... Jesus praying that the disciples will be placed in the Father and in the Son. Okay? And that I call that the first phase. Okay? That's the first phase of, of um, the atonement. Okay? That the believer be placed in Christ. Okay? And let me show you the second phase now is in verse 23. Verse 23, it says now, I in them, okay? So the, f the, f the first phase was the, the believer in Christ. Now the second phase is Christ in the believer. <laughs> right? So, so, so that, those were the two phases. Now, that, these two phases were what the coming of Christ was to accomplish. That the believer be placed in Christ and that Christ be received into the believer. Those were the two phases that the coming of Christ was to accomplish. Alright? Now, so let's look at Colossians 1.27 to see this was the hope of the Colossians, right? Well, of Paul to the Colossians, right? Or for the Colossians. Um, Colossians 1 verse 20, the church at Colossae. He said to them, To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. Okay? So you, the believer, will be made a temple. You, the believer, will be made the house of God. That Christ may be may dwell in you. Okay? So let's look at Revelation 21 22. Okay? Revelation 21 22. Look what it says there. And this is talking about the the the, the New Jerusalem. It says, I saw no temple therein. Okay? Now notice early up in the book of Revelation. Like say um, Revelation 11, there was a temple, and that temple in in verses one and two was on the earth, because the Gentiles were given to trample that temple. That's the destruction of the temple at Jerusalem by the Romans, and then later down in that same same chapter, you see another temple opened in heaven, right? Which is this one, <laughs> okay? But what is that temple? It says. For the Lord God Almighty, that's the Father, and the Lamb, that's the Son, are the temple of it. So which means now, there is now a new covenant, or a new world, or a new way, wherein the temple is not a physical building, <laughs> but it is the relationship to God in Christ, because the temple is... The Father and the Son. And those who are in that temple, it's their, phys it's their spiritual relationship to God in Christ. So you see it? <laughs> right? But, oh, today, what are, we, what are we hearing from the church? I've got a mansion just over the hill. To, boy, when I go up there, boy, I can get a big house. And I want my house with, with gold walls and gold floor and a gold toilet. All of these things are fleshly understanding. Right? 
what the church teaches today is the Nicodemus teaching. Remember when Nicodemus came to Christ and Christ said, look man, you need to be born again. And, Jesus, and Nicodemus was like, well, born again? Am, am, am I to go back in my mother's womb? Flesh understanding. Oh, we, we're looking up into the sky because we want to see a man coming down riding a horse with a, on top of the clouds with angels around him and we're going to hear a trumpet and he's going to burst the eastern sky. People going to come out up to the graves. Flesh understanding. Jesus says, you have to eat my body, drink my blood. <laughs> right? And some people put so much emphasis in the eating of the bread and the drinking of the wine as if those things have any life in them. But what was Jesus talking about? He said, he's talking about being one. He's talking about being in us because when we eat the bread and we drink the wine, those represent Christ coming into us. That's the reality, but we hold on to the symbol. We teach the symbol. We look for the symbol. We understanding in the symbols. But in the reality, we have no clue. <laughs> we have no experience. We have no knowledge. Jesus told the woman, he says, look, the time is coming when you don't need to go up to this building or this mountain or in Jerusalem or in the temple. Wherever you are, God is in you and you are in God you worship him there but what the church is in today oh welcome into the house of God and God is present here and you know 